My name's Jasmine Bertels. I'm a financial and business journalist, an author, and the director of the Money Magpie website. I'm also patron of the charity Fair For You and have been for the last four years. I'm now joined by Angela Clements, who is Fair For You's chief executive and the person who started all of this off. Angela, hello. Hello. What was the reason why you set up Fair For You? So I used to run a, a credit union in Birmingham and what I found was the customers that we would want to serve were going to rent to own companies. Um, and I couldn't quite work out why really, um, because we were cheaper and we were around the corner. But the reality was what we weren't doing was actually listening to what our customers really needed and that they needed really quick responses. When the washing machine stops working, they need a really quick solution. Fair for All, which is the dormant asset funding for the affordable credit sector, have provided some funding for some updated social impact reporting. Really, the point of this report was to hear hear the voices of our customers. We, we try really hard to get those voices heard because they are voiceless in society. They don't get, they have no consumer power, they don't get heard. Yes, yeah, so this, this report, as you say, it's, it's a new independent report that's just been released exploring the social impact that Fair For You has had for customers and the wider society. Um, and now it's written by Damon Gibbons, who's the director of the Centre for Responsible Credit. So let's listen back to a conversation you recently had with Damon about the report, highlighting the growing need for affordable credit and how it makes a case for further investment in Fair For You to enable you to scale and help a whole lot more families. What this study was about, more than anything else, was to actually look at the difference that Fair For You then made to people's lives as a result of them finding you. And I, I was astonished, really, by just the huge variety of ways in which getting access to essential items like cookers, fridges, washing machines, beds and so forth has on people's lives. And, and I didn't think about that, uh, you know, prior to approaching the research. And it was something which really came out. But we identified over 20 different ways in which people's lives were improved by borrowing from Fair For You. Now, a lot of that was because of the specific product that they actually bought using Fair For You loans. Half of all Fair For You's customers report an improvement in health due to the specific item that they were able to gain access to. Um, and in many cases, well, because we asked them, how did that impact on your use of GP and health services? People can point to it reducing the number of times that they have to visit their GP, and therefore the number of times that they receive prescriptions and so forth as well. Out of that, on average, three and a half fewer visits to GPs because of the items that they've got. But also it costs people money to go without some of these items. Cookers, fridges and washing machines in particular. It costs people, on average, we found, just short of £30 a week to live without those items. Which is just scandalous because clearly that has a knock-on impact on their ability to feed themselves properly and even to pay the, the bills, the, the rent and the council tax. Well, that makes me quite pleased to hear you say that we've actually got the customer base that we set out for. I'm not happy at what you're finding, but I'm pleased at least to know that we are serving the demographic that we set out to serve. Just looking at some of the figures, Anjan, and you know, you, you'll be aware of this more than anybody else, I'm sure. You know, the, back in 2013, government, provided what were called community care grants to people through the social fund system. £240 million worth of grants were made to people in 2013. It devolved some of that budget to local authorities in, in that year, but then cut the money back uh, from 2015 onwards, such that by 2017-18, Church Action on Poverty reported this, the, the actual amount of grants going out through local authorities was three quarters lower than it was uh, in 2013. Now, that's created huge material deprivation problems because people aren't getting grants. What was apparent about the Fair For You business as well is you, you're being driven, Ange, to become profitable, sustainable, 
because obviously you know people putting their money into you want to see some form of return as well on their money but that that means this gap is just growing you know between people who are frankly too poor at the moment to get a loan from you but not poor enough to get a grant because the grants have reduced so this is a huge social problem that we're looking at we're now going to take a quick break from Anja and Damon's conversation to listen to a borrower's experience of using Fair For You. My name is Lindsay. I've been a customer with Fair For You for around three to four years. I'm a, now a full-time carer for my three disabled children. I first heard about Fair For You from a friend through a special needs group. I'd had some trouble getting credit anywhere and my son needed a, a new bed. His bed was broken and with him having special needs, he needed an orthopedic style type bed or a mattress, which was hard to find and expensive. She recommended Fair For You. It was very easy to apply, did the application and I heard back, I think it was the same day and I ended up getting his bed within about three or four days. It was absolutely brilliant. He was, he was just in a, a small toddler bed and with him having mobility issues, he was always falling out no matter how many guards or anything we put up. So having an orthopedic style bed and a mattress as well actually helped him because he, he has a lot of pain in his legs, in his back. And, and it's, an, it's an amazing bed. It's so comfortable for him. He absolutely loves it. He hasn't fallen out of it once. So it made a big difference for him. Last year, we, we did come across some financial difficulty. Um, it was not long after we'd moved into the bungalow that we were in and I'd, per, um, I'd got a new couch and I was paying for a few months fine and then unfortunately we lost my youngest child's disability living allowance and we had to go through a tribunal and fight for that but it did take a while to get that back. So our money was impacted massively because of that. Um, and when I did phone Fair For You to explain all of this, I wanted to try and go on a bit of a reduced payment plan and because I still had a bit of the bed to pay for, and then I just got this couch, I felt horrible. They were absolutely lovely. They were absolutely fine with me going on a reduced payment plan, and that, and I was, I've been, I was on that for about a, a year. I never got pressured to pay any extra. I never got hounded with phone calls or emails. My payment went out every week. It was all fine. Um, I managed to pay my couch off a couple of months ago, and then... And amazingly, I, when I applied again for a shopping card recently, which was to help with some sensory toys for my children and some small household items that we needed, I got accepted. I was so grateful, I almost cried because I didn't think I would get accepted again after I'd been on a payment plan for so long with them. If I hadn't have gotten the items that I got off Fair For You, that would have impacted massively. I don't know, for a start, I don't know where I would have been able to get a bed. I couldn't get credit anywhere else and I couldn't afford a bed and it would have taken me months and months to save up for one. So that, that was a massive help and obviously it would have been a massive struggle if my son didn't have a bed. And when I first moved into here, um, my youngest son has... Um, stimming issues with his autism so he bounces constantly he broke our last couch that's why I needed a new couch again the only place I could get credit so I was very grateful for that because we were sitting on just bean bags for the first couple of months of moving in because <laughs> we didn't have any um couches it, it makes me quite emotional talking about it I can't get me words out but it does mean a lot to me just the thought of the company being so accommodating and and thinking of you all the time and it, it meant a lot to me. I've seen over 1,200 comments on the customer survey, and I've looked at every one of them myself, about the impact that your company has made on people's lives. Some of the things I've read have pretty much at times, you know, almost reduced me to tears. You know, there have been there have been tears in my eyes when I've been reading some of these these testimonials. And that's not just because in many cases people have been reporting how tough it was, the problems they had before they found food for you, but also because they demonstrate a fierce customer loyalty. 
that is out there for yeah. your customers at the moment? Oh, no, no. We, we get that. We hear that every day. Every day my staff hear that and we see it on our, our Facebook or Trustpilot or I get little emails coming in from people at, and I look forward. I hope to greeting you back in three or four years' time for the next report and I hope I hope to goodness we've got a lot further in terms of scale because there is there is just so much more to be done. I mean, we sometimes use the phrase that we're saving the people who've made it to the beach a little bit. We're, we're aware there's so many more out there that we should be doing more yeah. for. Well, I can say I, w I will definitely come back uh, whenever you want me to. Uh, what I will say, it's very difficult for people like me who make their living doing research to say this because usually in every research report the recommendation is more research <laughs> so <laughs> unsurprisingly you don't say <laughs> yeah but i am going to say this because it's true that some research might be helpful to try to nail down some of those in a bit more you know put monetary values to them however i'm going to say this the last thing I would want to see happen here is for an industry of researchers to be funded to find proxies and financial values for the impacts that we've observed, the huge range of them, because that is not the priority. We know that it makes a huge difference to people's lives. We can see that it's evidenced in all the things they've told us. You know, you've created by our estimate over 50 million pounds of social value. The job is not to go out and try and put monetary estimates to all of that. The job, I think, is for people to see clearly this is an absolute no-brainer. With 33,000 customers, 77,000 loans, you know, that has been a phenomenal achievement given the resources that have been available, but there are 4 million households living in social housing. We know that the scale of the high cost credit industry just a couple of years ago was in the region of eight billion pounds of lending going out there. You know, so, so you proved it can be done. The question now isn't about proving that it can be done. It's about scaling it up, vastly yeah. scaling it up. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the results of that will be self-evident in terms of people's health, in terms of people being better able to pay their rent, council tax and so forth. There's a point at which research becomes redundant. And I actually think we've, we're, we're virtually at that point with Fairview. There is very little point doing more research. What we actually need to do is put more money in at cheaper yeah. cost. No, I can't. Well, I can't disagree with that. That's certainly what what we most need to happen, and what we uh, most need to happen next, really. You are listening to Angela and Damon discussing the Centre for Responsible Credits report into Fair for Use social impact. Lots to think about there, Angela, um, including as you you mentioned the, the kind of people who are poor but not poor enough. You know, isn't that a weird sort of situation that that we have here? Yeah, it is. It's pretty horrendous for our point of view. I mean, we, we helped a lot of people through COVID, in particular washing machines, laundrettes were closed. It, there was, but there was so much more we should be doing. We just know we could. You said about, you know, needing to scale up. What do you need to do that? Is it just cash? Is, is it basically a big cash in, injection that you need? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's really capital. Uh, you know, we've just restructured our uh, balance sheet with Sportums there for all. Um, and our existing social investors. So, so we now have a relatively strong balance sheet, but what we need is, is capital for lending. And, and this would be basically to continue what you're doing with washing machines, etc. But do you have other plans as well that you would like to, to go into? Yeah, there's loads. <laughs> there's so much that we see. that we. <laughs> it's, it's one of those crazy things, really. The more you get into this, the more you see how much there is to be done. Uh, funeral poverty is huge in the UK. Expenses that come out of the blue that take a family uh, household budget out. There's so many areas we know we could do so much more. Well, let's hope. We'll keep trying um, because, as you say, uh, if you just get that capital, that big cash injection, a whole host more families will be helped. And that has to help the country generally in, in all kinds of aspects. 
Well, that brings us to the end of the episode. If you'd like to explore working with this phenomenal purpose-driven and well-managed company, or you'd just like to find out more, you can go to fairforyou.co.uk for more information or contact Angela directly at angela.clements at fairforyou.co.uk. Thanks to Angela and Damon and all the Fair For You customers who kindly contributed to the podcast and report and to our producer, Ollie Seymour.